Hallo guys, The Critical German here and welcome to a new wunderbares video. Today we talk about the Danganronpa anime Danganronpa 3 Future Arc. And no, not the game Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. That game was a masterpiece though. No my dear Freunde, today we don't talk about a masterpiece. We talk about an accident of the hardest level. I want to prevent you from watching Future Arc, so I will spoil the shit out of it to show you how bad it is. Also, spoilers for the video games Danganronpa 1 and 2, because Future Arc is its direct sequel. So yeah, I'm a huge Danganronpa fan. I really love the three mainline games and I think nothing comes close to this experience. This leads to one question. How does it translate to an anime format? Answer it's difficult. At least it's difficult when the idea is solid but the script and the characters are absolute shit. So what is Future Arc about? It takes place after Danganronpa 1. Makoto and his friends joined the Future Foundation which is the last hope for humanity because it stands against the despair that destroyed the world. It has a headquarter that fights against the Monokumas and does other stuff I guess. Yeah, it's not really explained what they do. Makoto, Kyoko, Asahina and the fortune teller guy are invited to the HQ but oh no, they are trapped there with the employees of the future foundation and are forced to play a death game. It was a trap by Monokuma. So 17 people are trapped in this building. The rules of the death game are, at a certain point in time some guests put them to sleep. During this sleep one of the 17 people is not affected by the gas and so he kills one of the other sleeping people. So the question is, who is the murderer? They also have some extra rules they need to follow, each person gets an individualized one. When they don't follow this rule, they die instantly. It's exciting stuff like <laughs> toad run on the floor. Whoa, they really use this concept in a cool way. But jokes aside, the concept is interesting and could result in heavy mind games but they decided to give them lame restrictions such as the one I mentioned. But the most important point is, it doesn't work because every single character is just ass. We will trash over them one by another but first we need a comparison to the characters in the game. It works pretty well there because we get to know the characters better by spending time with them. This way we get emotionally attached to them and they are not one dimensional. This makes their deaths more tragic because we really like the character. Or it makes it tragic because the character we thought we knew became the killer. So we didn't really really know them. It is very effective and one reason why the games are so memorable. This deep connection to the characters is not given in future arc. We get to know nothing about the characters so we don't care if they die. I get it that they get more development in the despair arc which takes place before the future arc and you're supposed to watch it side by side but that's just not enough with this amount of characters and they are badly written. Let's talk about them, shall we? I won't drop the names though because they're forgettable anyway. Weird high pitched voice guy. He dies in like two minutes after the game started. Wow, what a cool character. Mask guy. He is like pretty angry and stuff, okay? Old dude. He is the leader of the future foundation and he is old but can apparently fight like a shonen character in his 20s with his fists. More on that later. Kioske, a more interesting character that gets more screen time and challenges Makoto's ideas of hope. Cowboy guy, he really sims for Kyoko because he knew her father. Monster lady, she was the ultimate pharmacist and can drink stuff and turn into a monster. You know, just normal everyday pharmacist stuff. A teacher. She was Kyosuke's wife but dies first. She gets more screen time in the despair arc so she is irrelevant for the future arc and apparently they wrote her out because of her role in said arc. Simping box guy. He sims for Kyosuke and boxes. Candy girl. She is the ultimate candy maker or something like that and acts like a bitch 24 7. Boyfriend. He is Candy Girl's boyfriend and is just there to literally simp and do everything for her. Robot girl in wheelchair. She doesn't really do anything and is only there to make a reference to a Danganronpa spin-off game. Wow. Anime dude. He can animate stuff and 
I'm not kidding you, is the key to everything and is basically responsible for the apocalypse. Well, who else? Fortune teller dude. He is from the original game and they just write him out because he is annoying and they apparently can't handle a comic relief character. He is literally excluded from the death game and needs to wait outside. Asahina. Asahina was a more boring character and only worked in Danganronpa because there were other more interesting characters that challenged her good natured view. But as a standalone character she just doesn't work and is not strong enough considering her traits. She is basically a boring goody two shoes in future arc. Kyoko. She is still the same and is too good for this anime. Makoto. Let's address the elephant in the room here. Makoto is not a well written character and he didn't need to be in the original game because he basically represented us, the player itself. He specifically had less traits and was an everyday man so we could project ourselves onto him. He was literally chosen because of luck and had no greater talent. So making this dude the main character of the anime, it just doesn't work and his character is narrowed down to you must have hope, believe in yourself. There you have it, we talked about every character. The arc has like 12 episodes. How are they supposed to develop these characters in 12 episodes anyway? Even if you count the backstories in the despair arc. But despair arc had its own set of characters and its own story it needed to tell. Just number wise it's impossible and that makes it a bad idea to have so many characters. And the biggest question of all is, why has the cast more sims than a gamer girl comment section on Twitch. But the worst part is yet to come. The writing is just atrocious. And this isn't an exaggeration. I have encountered just a few stories that were written this bad. My best friend and I loved our asses off at how bad the finale was. Want to know the big reveal? Oh man, <laughs> this is so stupid I can't believe it. Ready? So the mastermind of this whole death game isn't Monokuma but the old dude. You know why he did it? Because anime dude produced a hope anime that can cure all despair by just looking at it. But he didn't want to release it so old dude initiated this death game to show anime dude despair. And when he saw this despair he released the video and everybody is full of hope. Oh my god. I am not, and I must clearly repeat it, I am not making this up. You probably realize that this is just plain stupid. There could have been another way for old you to convince him. Maybe, you know, talk about it with him, make good arguments, or torture him until he does it, or just steal the video. But no, 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 no. The most logical and efficient way is to held up a death game where you can potentially die and all of your employees who are all together the last hope of humanity. Sounds like a good plan if you ask me. And the best part about the hope anime, it apparently works like the Gias in Code Gias and the one who sees it automatically obeys to everything you say. Anime dude uses it to control some guards. They explain it by, the animation works like that because it brainwashes you. Nine, nine, that's not how brainwashing works. You can't just control people like that so they do everything you want. It's just gears but with a phone. I can't get over this. It was so ridiculous but man what a comedy. Speaking of comedy, Kyoko dies. Yeah, yeah, good transition. She dies because of her you're not allowed to gimmick. Her said that she dies if Makoto survives until a specific round. And of course he survives, he's the main character. So Kyoko is doomed to die, great. But that's not the problem here. The problem is that she magically survived the deadly poison and reappears as a surprise at the end of the series. What the hell? First off, everybody died instantly. Why didn't she die? And even if they explained all that, it's just inconsistent writing. You can't just bring a character back like it's nothing because you eliminate every emotional beat you gave away in the scene of death. The emotional weight is just washed away like it's nothing. Wow, good job in writing. Maybe use some phone gears to convince us that the writing was masterclass. And no, no I'm not finished. You want to know the other big twist? Turns out the dude didn't kill the 
the people himself in between the rounds when they were sleeping, although he was the mastermind and planned the killing game. No, the people killed themselves. See, there are screens everywhere through which Monokuma speaks to the people. The person that sleeps nearest to the screen isn't affected by the gas and wakes up. Then a dagger falls out of the screen and the screen uses phone gears to manipulate them to kill themselves. Ah, uh, what else did you expect? But one thing that I didn't get is, the old dude was the mastermind, so he must have installed the screens and make it seem like Monokuma was the bad guy. His goal was to convince anime dude with his death game to release his brainwash hope video to the world. Then why on earth does he use the same brainwashing to make the people kill themselves? So he already knows how this brainwashing thing works, so why does he go to all the trouble to set up this stupid game when he already has access to the technology? I mean sure, you could argue that he can just brainwash people to kill themselves. And in order to spread hope, you need to specifically have the video of the anime dude. But can't you just put positive stimuli to the video and spread hope when the basic brainwashing technology is clearly given? But uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. This makes me angry and this is so unbelievable stupid. The dagger thing also creates another big problem. Part of what makes the Danganronpa game so great is to uncover the motivation behind the murder from the perspective of the murderer. This is not given when the person just suicides. I think this doesn't need more explanation. You're smart, you get the point. They just took away a great and essential part of the games. I could go on for days, but here is the last point. It suddenly implements intense shonen fight scenes for no reason and that feels so off in a murder mystery premise. The old dude suddenly fights Kyosuke with his bare hands and dies. And then in the next scene it's back to murder mystery. Why focusing on random cool fight scenes? They could have easily cut this and put more emphasis on the murder mystery and the characters. But no, they waste time with this genre crossing instead and like I said they just have like 12 episodes with dozens of characters. Yeah, sounds like a good idea to force in some random shonen action. Oh boy, future arc is not just bad. It's just an insult to the fans of the games. It has bad characters, stupid writing and the murder mystery sucks ass. But you know what is at least good? The opening theme Dead or Lie by Maon Kurosaki. It's a masterpiece, listen to it. The anime didn't deserve this masterclass opening. No, nope, I don't recommend this anime to you. I want to prevent you from watching it. I would even use phone gears to do so. And you know what I also use phone gears for? To make you subscribe to the channel, to leave a like and a comment so the YouTube algorithm notices me. That was my opinion, see you in the next video, macht's gut, bis dann, ciao.